Hey guys, welcome to the first part of the tutorial series for the Shadow Strike ability from Shadow of Mortar. Um, right in this project, we currently have a character, and if I hit the F key, time will be slown. And during this time, I can target an enemy by simply looking at him. So right here, I've made some enemies. Um, I'll also show you how to do this in the video. If I hit F, I slow down, and if I look at enemy, on the top left corner, you can see a print string of the enemy I'm currently targeting. And if I leave, if I look away from the enemy, I won't be targeting anymore. And I can switch between targets simply by looking at them. And currently there isn't any visual presentation that we're targeting an enemy, but we'll be adding some overlay, VFX, and whatnot. But for now, let's just get this targeting system as it will lay the foundation for the future videos. If you want access to the project files, you can join my Patreon, which you'll get all the access files, and you'll also get the entire code in full comments so you understand what each and every system is doing. So, without any delay, let's get started. So, right here, I have a third person project opened up. I imported the sword animation by 9CG. We will only be using the execution animations, just the um, execution and the target ones. If you want to make your own locomotion, you can do so yourself, but I won't be doing that. I'll just be using what's already given here in the third person project. To start off, I'm going to open up the third person project character and switch out the mesh. Uh, personally, I like the UE4 mannequin. It just looks a lot nicer and look cooler. So, if we give this a run, we should have a still functional character. Nothing is wrong with it. Perfect. So, let's start with making an input for it. So, an input to start the shadow mode. And then we'll need another input to actually do the execution. But we'll do that later. For now, let's start with the startup. So, start shadow. You can name it whatever you want but in the ia in the input action we need to add a press to trigger so we don't constantly generate a boolean value we'll just get a true once we hit the key and then it will stay false right here we need to add it into our mapping to ia shadow and i'm just going to bind that to the f key you can use any key you want. To pull up the input action, we just need to search for the name. So I start shadow. And we are only going to be using the trigger part because that's when this pin will fire when we press the key and everything else would really not do anything much for us here. So in the trigger pin, we want to make a branch. And we're going to need a variable, and this variable is going to store whether or not we are in the shadow mode. So, B is shadow mode, or B shadow active. And if we are not in the shadow mode, so not boolean, then we should enter the shadow mode, which implies that we need to slow down time, and we need some sort of like special effects to visually represent that we are in the shadow mode, so... For now, we're just going to slow down time and get that all set up and we'll start with VFX in the next episode. So right here, we set this to true. So once this becomes true, a not boolean would flip that. And so if this is already true, then it will call off in the false pin, which we won't be doing anything in there. And so the next part is setting the global time dilation. So set time dilation. Dilation and I'm gonna set it to 0.1 as I found that that is a good value for me Now the next part is gonna be a bit tricky setting a timer for it Now we do have a function called set timer By event or by function name, but the issue with this is that if the global time dilation is lower than one then the timer will not play at normal speed and so uh, I found a new way to work around this, which is by using timelines. So if we open, make a new timeline, call this slow shadow timer and play from start. I found that we can, there's a settings here in the timeline to tell it to ignore the global time dilation. 
And so if we set it to five seconds, it'll play at five seconds regardless of what the global time dilation is. So in here, we will just need a float track and we don't need anything here, so just name it whatever. The only big important thing is the length here. And so I'll leave it at five seconds, but if you want it shorter or longer, you're more than welcome to change it. On the finished pin, we are just going to set our global time dilation back to one. So set global time dilation back to one. And we will set this variable back to false. So Now to actually uh, modify the settings for the timeline to ignore the time dilation, we actually need to do that here in the begin play. It will ensure that we actually get that setting changed because by default it doesn't ignore it. So at a sequence here and off of the sequence pin, we need to first grab our component. So under the components here in the variables, we should have our timeline and timelines are considered as components. And so right here we just said, ignore time dilation and we need to check this true and so now our timeline will ignore the global time dilation and will play at normal speed and so right here would just comment reset time reset speed, game speed and so if we give that a roll we should actually see that in place so right now i'm at normal speed once i hit f i should only play for five seconds after that I should be returning back to my normal so one more time so yeah it's roughly about five seconds from me counting so that should do it for now we will be cleaning this up later in the video so for now just leave it as it is um, the next thing we're gonna do is make a targeting system but before we do that let's make an enemy so we can actually target it Right here, we're just gonna duplicate this and call it DP enemy. And right here, we're just gonna remove the um, spring arm, the camera, and every bit of code here. Won't be needing anything, and so that's good. We'll just drop one in here into the world. Now, we're reusing the tick here. Um, people say that using tick function isn't the best, but in this particular case where we're controlling the tick, I think it's okay to be using it. So right here on the branch, we should only be tracing if we are in the shadow mode. So just plug in the shadow mode. And so if in shadow mode, <clears throat> now the next thing we'll be doing is doing a trace. Now, depending on how you want to do this, you can choose whatever trace you want. But for my specific one, I'm just gonna use a sphere trace, trace for objects. Now we won't need any like multi-sphere traces or any multi-trace since we only worry about the first target that we hit. In Shadow Mortar, I think there is like a more precise targeting system to it. Like you can pull out your bow and arrow and you can shoot a specific target. And in that case, you would use a line trace, but since setting a whole bone air system is gonna be complex, I'm just gonna keep it simple by using a sphere trace. And so I wanna trace from our camera to the enemy. So whatever my camera's looking at, not what my player is. So I'm gonna grab my camera and get the world location. And that'll be my starting point. For the ending point, we will need to grab the forward vector for this and we need to multiply by float. And that will give us a distance. So our forward vector times a float will give us distance and we need to add that to our world location. And so I'll just keep this at around 1500 and we need to add that to our world location in order for this to work. Now for the radius, I'm gonna say about 150. You can tweak that however you please. 
for object types, make arrays, and we need a ruby tracing pawns. If you have your own object type, you can choose that here as well. So on actors ignore, we can ignore self and draw the book type. Let's just for duration and let's just see how this works. So if I go in and I hit F, you can see that um, I'm drawing a bunch of traces and see there's the green which is saying that I've hit something, which is, per which is working great. Now we want to actually do something with it. So on the branch here, we should always use branches here. This will always control whether or not we execute any code. And this branch will return, this return value should return if we hit anything or not. If we did, then we should have valid variables and information that we can use. Here on the kit, we can break. And the only thing we're really important in here, the only thing we're really using here is the hit actor. And so here we're gonna promote this variable and call it target actor. You can change the name however you want. I know I'm using target actor a lot in my videos, so feel free to change that however. But it's always important to first check if it's valid first. So it is valid. And if it is valid, we set the target actor to the actor. And just for demonstration, let's just print the name for now. Cat name. Get display name and give it a roll. So if I F and nothing, and once I touch, yep, I'm getting a print. So that's working. But now we need to figure out how to untarget an enemy if we are no longer targeting it. So let's delete this real fast. So here, if it's valid, we actually want to change it to a branch. So on the branch here is if this is valid. So is valid. And the other one is not valid. It's valid and boolean. And we need to grab our target actor and we need to check if this actor is already valid. If it's already valid and we hit a different enemy, then that means that this current enemy needs to be removed or replaced. But we need first check if this target actor is equal to our hit actor. So we can just do an equal equal, just plug this in. And so if it is valid and if we are already equal, then we don't need to actually really set anything here. So under the false here, so if it is either becomes invalid or is not, equal to the actor, then we want to set it. On the true here, if it's um, if it's equal, equal, then we don't really do much here. If we don't hit anything, we also want to clear it. So we can give that a check and by printing on a sequence here. Sequence and then on the pin one, we can print string doing an is valid note so is valid so if they are valid we should print the name print name get name display name and here I'm just gonna add a key so we don't get like massive output of it point zero one now if we play we look at the energy we get it if we leave it shouldn't Yep, the targeting goes away, click away, we don't get it, look back, get it, perfect, so it should be working, we might need to tweak this later, but for now it seems to be working, so let me double check some stuff here, just making sure that it works and it has a very high chance of working. Um, best way to do so is to just run the game while having the code run as well so we can see what we're actually doing so right here we're not hitting anything so it's output what you do we set it and then once we set it we are running on the true so right here so here in the is valid note if an enemy comes invalid if the hit actor is invalid we should just reset it so i think we should just make a keep this as and is valid here. So if the enemy is valid, we should check whether or not the 
enemy is already equal to the actually better it would just be not equal to if we are not equal to the target actor then we should set it putting out the false just makes it a bit messy here and on false we should clear it as well so we can get rid of this so let's just double check once more making sure everything is working as intended zoom this out a little bit so if we hit f we're not hitting anything if we hit something we set it and then we're no longer setting it because it's already true and our target actor does equal our hit actor so we don't need to set it twice we will be making some adjustments here later once we have an enemy to see whether or not the enemy is already dead or not um i won't be making a whole finance state machine for it i'll just doing like a basic boolean check but you're more than welcome to learn and implement your own finite state machine so let's pause this up with some bit of comments as they are quite important let's be your turns enemy right here if Okay, so now our character is able to target an enemy, and if we are looking away, we won't be able to target him. But let's pull up a debugger just to better demonstrate that. <clears throat> Q of 1 and duration, we're at 0.01. Okay, so now if we give it a roll, let's also remove our targeting thing, our debugger. Now let's give it a roll. If we look at me, if we look away, yep, yeah, it's working just fine. Perfect. In the next episode, we'll be working on the executions and the VFX so we can better represent if an enemy's targeted or not and whether or not the character's in the shadow mode. So, hope you see that.